Alex Adetokounmpo and Scotty Barnes give the Toronto Raptors two 20-year-olds with at least a 7'2 wingspan along with a tight handle off the dribble. This video breaks down every reason for why those two youngins could become the next Giannis and how much they can contribute to the Raptors in 21-22. Before continuing, over three quarters of my audience isn't subscribed, so please subscribe. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a huge difference. So you know about Scotty Barnes, he's been mentioned in my Rookie of the Year prediction and my last two videos strictly talking about the Raptors back in August. We'll get to my prediction for what he can average this year, but first we have to look at the newest Toronto Raptors potential future phenom on the wing as on September 17th, it was reported that Masai Ujiri had come to terms with the youngest Adetokounmpo brother on a training camp contract. Alex isn't the Adetokounmpo that Toronto fans were chasing, but he's yet to be given a fair chance both in the NBA and overseas. In his senior year at Dominican High School in Wisconsin, the 6'8 forward averaged 14.4 points and 8 rebounds. He showed off flashy upside, but that wasn't good enough to get too many college offers. So Greek Freak Jr. decided to go play overseas to get a year of pro experience under his belt but he was only given one game of playing time all season in the EuroLeague. Alex wasn't picked in this year's draft and barely got playing time in the Summer League with the Sacramento Kings. However, his team did win the Summer League title, but this kid needs some reps in a competitive 5-on-5 pro environment to see if he can fulfill his tremendous upside, an opportunity he hasn't gotten yet. Anyone who's still not old enough to drink with the reach of a center who's shown point forward abilities and has the same bloodline as the most recent finals MVP has insane potential. Alex still has to crack the 15 man roster, but the Raptors 905 in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, Toronto's NBA G League affiliate could provide him with the ideal spot to develop his game. Taking into account his youth and lack of experience, it's unlikely Alex will make a difference at the highest level this season with the Raptors. But if training camp goes well, it's possible he eventually gets promoted to the big club at some point down the road. The 905 has seen the Raptors develop the games of Pascal Siakam, Norman Powell, and Fred Van Vliet. And given the team only plays a few hours outside of the six, it's proved to be the perfect minor league affiliate. More on Alex, which you can't miss, is coming up. Right before I talk about Toronto's number four pick in the draft, he's not a Giannis-esque talent, but since we're talking about wing players, the Raps also made Reggie Perry their 20th and final invite to training camp. Perry was a rookie for the Brooklyn Nets last year who mostly played garbage time over 26 games, but he did have his moments here and there, playing a few good games against high-seeded teams like the Utah Jazz and New York Knicks. Reggie's a small ball four who's a willing screen setter having shown the ability to spot up from deep range. Like Adetokounmpo, he's of course behind OG, Scotty, Utah, Wananabe, and Siakam in the Raptors' depth chart at forward, and still has to make the team in the first place. However, I think Reggie's pro experience will allow him to stay on the end of the bench because Toronto's going to need an injury replacement if one of those aforementioned wing players go down. With the far better chance of becoming the next Giannis than Adetokounmpo's brother, Scotty Barnes has a reach which stretches out one inch further than Alex, as Toronto's number four overall pick has a seven foot three wingspan. We'll get to his on-court upside, but what's most intriguing about Barnes is the off-court flair he's displayed. From the confident swag in his step, which was displayed at the draft, to his interactions with Raptor fans around the city and already clear admiration for Toronto, the man embraces every bit of the spotlight. His confidence and natural intensity are as important as any other quality that Barnes provides on the court. That's because his mentality fuels his overall value, specifically on the defensive end. Last year, several of Toronto's perimeter players were giving up blow buys to the basket one after the other, but the addition of Scotty should cover up those players' defensive liabilities. Thanks to his length, he can contest ISO jumpers even if he's a few feet away from his matchup, but Scotty rarely gets broken down off the dribble in the first place. He fiends off extending his pressure and disrupting the handle of smaller guards. Also for his size, the kid has exceptional once-in-a-generation type lateral quickness. 
as he's able to quickly cover ground to cut off driving lanes. Barnes will definitely provide immediate impact defensively, but on the other end, he's a little bit less developed. Scotty needs to improve his jumper and shot creating, but in a 24-game sample size at Florida State University, he showed off solid upside on this end. He can make Greek freak strides to the basket off the bounce, both in the half court and in transition, as he's displayed an excellent handle and flashes of a three-point shot. Barnes was named Rookie of the Year in his college conference, and while many Toronto fans wanted Suggs, as the years progress, Scotty's going to prove the doubters wrong. A few months following his first year at Florida State in Summer League, the recently turned 20-year-old's defense was elite and his shot creating looked improved. So I'm looking forward to year one of the Barnes Project in T.O. In terms of what will average in 2021, the one constant that Toronto can rely on is that Scotty will provide effort and hustle on both ends, which could translate into some very nice stats for a player trying to fit in alongside so many established vets. I see Barnes getting around 24 to 30 minutes, putting up around 11 to 15 points per night. In terms of his efficiency, look for him to shoot around 45% from the field and 30% from the three-point line with about two attempts per game from out there. This volume won't feature Barnes just chucking up shots wildly, but it'll give him a consistent enough workload to try and fix his most prevalent weakness. During an interview with Bleacher Report in 2018, focusing on his then 17-year-old little brother, Giannis said, quote, I definitely think Alex can be better than me. He stays motivated. He wants this. That's what makes him special. He's not satisfied. And Giannis clearly wasn't joking, as ahead of Alex's pre-draft workouts this past July, he doubled down on that statement, saying, quote, Alex Zedekunfo can be better than me. We should probably take the word of the Greek freak seriously, given he was saying the Milwaukee Bucks were built for this all year, and he ended up being spot on. Also, with versatile, lengthy forwards being about the hottest commodity there is, Alex has the perfect build and skill set for the modern NBA. Of course, he's still extremely raw, and there's still so many questions about his lack of playing time but I think this kid just needs a chance to blossom, and regardless of how he performs in Summer League, if I was GM, I'd put him in the 905 this year. Whether or not Toronto's a playoff team in 2021 is a video for another day, as it's debatable right now, given talented near all-stars like Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam are on the roster, along with a top 3 and D player in OG Ananobi. Alex still has to make the team, and it'll be interesting to see how he performs in training camp, but in terms of their top pick in Barnes, he should increase the team's winning percentage. Also, we can't forget the Raptors haven't played a home game for over a year and a half, but again, that's a video for another day. Let me know your take on Toronto's two wing players in the comments section. Do you think either Alex Dedekumpo or Scotty Barnes can become the next Giannis? Hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.